Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon here with Texas Plinking, making a different kind of video, uh, trying something different actually. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a while is make a comparison video. Uh, specifically, this is gonna be on the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 1 to 6 by 24 and the newly released Gen 3 1 to 10 by 24. Uh, now, wanting to do this comparison, I kind of strung up some ideas. Uh, this comparison isn't kind of the video I would normally put on the main Texas Plinking YouTube channel. That's kind of more for blasting around recreational kind of shooting for gun enthusiasts and kind of non-gun enthusiasts. It's just kind of, you know, high speed kind of fun content. And I don't think a like uh, analytical review uh, would do so well over there. I kind of sprung the idea. I wanted to do this video and I was going to initially just upload it on Facebook and maybe Instagram. So IGTV, that's still the plan. But I think that kind of came up with the idea that now I want to start a second YouTube channel, probably like Texas Plinking Gear or something along those lines. So I'll probably have this as the first uh, upload on that channel. So that's going to be kind of the B channel to Texas Plinking. And it's all going to be about kind of more analytical stuff, maybe some tutorials on how to clean guns, disassemble field strip, uh, optic reviews, all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be on a separate channel. I think it's going to be Texas Plinking Gear, like I said. So that's kind of a new venture. So hopefully you guys like that. Otherwise, you guys might be watching on Instagram or Facebook and you guys don't really care. So with that said, again, we're comparing the Razer HD Gen 2 1 to 6 by 24 that has been out for quite some time and has been a staple in low power variable optics for competition shooters as well as recreation, hunting, all kinds of stuff. This has been a fantastic uh, option. One thing I want to say right away before we start getting into the comparison with the Gen 3 is that the Gen 3 is not the uh, successor to the Gen 2. It's not in a way that it's not the replacement to it. This is not going away. The Gen 2 is very much so still going to be produced and sold because it is a totally different optic. Um, obviously, we would expect a couple of different features here and there and specs to make it a new Gen 3. But uh, it's, it's not like the Gen 2 is going away. Um, in some cases, actually, you may prefer the Gen 2 over the Gen 3. In a lot of cases, you'll prefer the Gen 3 over the Gen 2. And so with that said, hopefully this video kind of clears it up a little bit on maybe which one is the one for you. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and go through the bulletin list of back and forths. Let's start with the price. I won't waste any time. Well, we'll talk about the price uh, gap. And then throughout the video comparison, you could kind of decide if it's worth the justification of that price difference for you, depending on the specs. But real quick, yeah, the price. For the Razer HD Gen 3 1 to 10, MSRP is at $2,900. However, the street price is $2,000. So just have that number in your head. As of right now, you can pick one up for about $2,000. The Gen 2 1 to 6, MSRP is for $2,000, and I believe the street price right now is just about $1,350. So that's a difference of about $650 of what you guys can pick it up for right now. So throughout the rest of the video, when I dive into the specs and kind of go back and forth between them, you guys can, with that number in your head, $650 gap, you guys can decide for yourselves if it's worth that jump for your applications. So the main difference and the most obvious is right within the name, the one to six by 24, the zoom range one to six, the objective lens is both 24 millimeters. Uh, and of course the Gen 3 being a 1 to 10. So it's more versatile in that you have that option to go all the way to 10 power. And at 10 power you could really use uh, an optic like a SPR DMR type thing, make some really distant shots. Not that you can't do that with the 6 power because the glass quality is most important to do that and both of them are phenomenal. We'll get on that when we get to the opinion side on this video. Uh, but yeah, it is a 1 to 10. That brings up the next difference in that Vortex thought within a 1 to 6, it wasn't worth having a first focal plane. Um, just because of also the way the reticle was set up. We'll talk about the reticle, but a one to six power, you're not gonna need a first focal plane, you know, on those lower numbers. At six power is when the reticle was calibrated correctly to where the relativity of the bullet job compensation and all that made sense. But because the one to 10 now goes from one to 10, they gave it a whole different reticle and put it on the first focal plane. Uh, that way from one all the way to 10, the relativity of the bullet job compensation um, always makes sense and is always calibrated correctly, if that makes sense. Now I mentioned the reticle. This is probably where I should mention that on both of these, you have the option of MOA, minute of angle, or the uh, Mills MRAD. Uh, so you always have the option on both of them. That being said, you have a couple of reticle options for the Gen 2, that being the VMR2 and the JM1 BDC reticle. Uh, versus the new reticle that they designed on the Gen 3. They call it the EBR9. And I'll put a screenshot here. Uh, you guys can see just how much uh, compensation it has for drop and windage. It's almost like their Christmas tree reticle being that EBR reticle. Um, but on the top, on the vertical plane, they also have a range finder, which is kind of neat as well for kind of faster acquisition shots and all that kind of stuff. But hey, if you don't need it, you don't need it. But it's up there. The Gen 2 has a 30 millimeter tube. They jumped that up on the Gen 3 to a 34 millimeter tube. The difference, they usually can pack in some more uh, clicks, uh, more adjustment range, 
uh, for elevation if you're going to be dialing. Otherwise, in a lot of cases, they're just a little bit more pleasant to look through. In the case of a low power variable optic, it's pretty negligible, uh, but the fact that they did it can only help and that's very, very nice. Speaking of the clicks, actually, the click values are different. On the Gen 2, it wasn't really supposed to be a precision scope for distance and all that kind of stuff, kind of a fast pace competition reticle and scope. That being said, the click values is 0.2 mils, or if you go MOA, it is half MOA click adjustments versus now that is a one to 10 on a first focal plane with that new reticle, they got a little bit more precise. So now it is a 0 0.1 uh, mil increment adjustment or quarter MOA, which is the exact same as any kind of precision scope, the Razer HD Gen 2 is three to 18 or four and a half to 27s and all that good stuff. For the most part, as far as functionality, that's really the main specs uh, to go through back and forth. The other thing is uh, the overall length and the weight, exactly the same. I forgot what it was, doesn't matter, they're exactly the same, so I forgot. Uh, but it's kind of cool, so that's kind of good progress. Now the Gen 2 wasn't really known for being a super lightweight optic, but the fact that they're now able to make it uh, well, 1 to 10 with a 34 millimeter tube on the first focal plane, along with the other features I mentioned, and keep the weight and the overall um, length and everything the exact same, that's impressive. So they're moving in the right direction. One other little difference I'll throw in here as well is the Gen 3 came with a throw lever in the box. You could always get that for the Gen 2, but um, I decided not to run it because the zoom ring moves so easily uh, as it is. And on this platform in particular, I didn't really want an extra thing sticking out, but hey, if you're a, a speedy ray shooter, three gunner or whatever, it comes in the box. So hey, that's kind of nice too. Now to be honest, that's kind of the end of my uh, cheat sheet and the bulletin list I wanted to cover on the difference of these two optics. The rest of the video, I'll kind of keep it pretty brief, but I'll just talk about my impressions and where I see one being better than the other and vice versa in different applications. Now, again, this is $650 less than this one. So this one has to be better. And ultimately, I think it's not so much better, it's just more versatile, so it's better in more applications, if that makes sense. Um, as far as how they're gonna perform at one power uh, all the way to six, the only difference really is gonna be a reticle and not having a first focal plane. Uh, the performance is all there on the Gen 2, obviously. The glass quality, I just gotta say on both of them, one is not more clear than the other in my, uh, from my experience. Both of them are just razor sharp, uh, pun intended, but um, yeah, they're, they're just like at the one power, it's just that hint of magnification that just gives you like this superhuman visibility, it seems like. It's almost like if you lived your whole life not knowing you needed glasses and you tried some on and you're like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to see. It's that level of clarity that you get from these series of scopes. That's the same on both of them. One is not worse quality than the other. They're of the same series. You have to remember that, the Razer HDs. So let's not waste any time. Let's just cut right to the chase. Where do I think the Gen 3 is $650 better than the Gen 2? Well, it's better at being a jack of all trades. Um, yes, you can shoot competitions with it and then go straight from that, put a bipod on it, know that you can trust the relativity with the first focal plane, zoom it all the way to 10, and then on a platform, versatile as well, like a SCAR, a 17 for example, um, then you could just go ahead and just uh, lay down some, uh, some lead at 750 yards very, very easily, all within the same scope. Um, and so that's where the Gen 3 really, really uh, speaks for itself, I think, is being able to go from close range, fast acquisition targets to long range SPR capability. Not that you can't do that with a six power, but where I think this is more so um, at home on a race gun. In fact, that's why I have it. The gun's just not here yet, so uh, look out for that. But these right here, yes, you can put them on a SCAR. In fact, the first time I ever shot with the Razer HD Gen 2 was on a SCAR 17, so now I've kind of seen uh, both optics on the same gun. And, uh, and it was fantastic. A benefit, I would say, with the Gen 2 over the Gen 3 is that you can always see the reticle very, very clearly throughout the zoom range. I will be honest, I love the versatility of the Gen um, 3, 1 to 10. Uh, at 10 power, the reticle looks great, it's not too thick, and then all the way down. But I will say, once you get to 1 power with this reticle, it's very, very fine to where you have to have a really good eye to see it. No problem, because if you saw my review I did with this on the main channel, um, even on illumination like 1 or 2, uh, you'll pick it up really quickly. It is daytime bright. In a broad daylight, uh, illumination six, and this thing looks like a red dot sight. So the reticle is really fine, but just put that illumination on and, uh, and you'll see it no problem during the day. Uh, whereas you really don't need the illumination with the Gen 2 uh, at one power because the reticle is not changing on you. It's, uh, it's the same thickness throughout. And uh, so that does benefit it on the one time power without illumination. Also, if you're gonna run the illumination on this, um, the dot, the illumination dot just looks cleaner because it is a dot on this, 
versus the illumination here starts to look like a dot because the reticle is so fine, but really you're illuminating uh, the four different like uh, reticle points, but it still looks like a dot. But now this looks like a cleaner dot because it's a true dot. We went really, really uh, in depth about the illumination dot, but I hope that makes sense. I'll try to put some screenshots up there. Is it worth a $650 jump? Yes and no. Uh, if you guys are gonna be running it on a competition gun, um, or if you're just okay on an SPR project without having the 10 power or second folk or first focal plane rather, all that kind of stuff. The Razor HD Gen 2 for $1,350 is gonna be a fantastic option for you. However, for $650, if you can justify having the overall more versatile platform, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna steer you away from getting the Gen 3. It has been my favorite low power variable optic. It's kind of hard to call it that knowing that it gets to 10 now. So it's a low to mid uh, power variable optic. And it's my favorite. Um, I can't think of a better match for a SCAR 17 or if you're gonna run it on a SPR, maybe a recce build or a AR-10, uh, hog hunting, long range competition, it'll do it all. But uh, anyway, that's kind of the bulletin list. If you guys are watching on Facebook, on the description of this video, I'll put a link to where you guys can check them out for yourselves. Um, if you guys are watching on Instagram, I'll probably put on my stories uh, some swipe up links to where you guys can check them out as well. And then if you're watching on YouTube, then probably in the description, uh, and that will be that. Anyway, I hope that kind of covered everything. Let me know if, uh, if you guys have any questions in any of the comment sections of the three platforms I mentioned, and I will do my best to respond to every single one of them if you guys uh, need me to clear up anything. But anyway, that does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.